Hi, it's Dwyer, DwyerCrime.blog, also GamblersAdvisory.com. Let's talk about the Adnan Syed case. I've recently watched HBO's Very Well Done, the case against Adnan Syed. Let's talk about it. Just some brief highlighted points in response to some of the points raised on the show. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me point out the obvious. The prosecution star witness, Jay Wiles, gave differing versions of the events Right, he himself has a colorful past. Right, apparently he considered himself to be part of the criminal element at the high school, Woodlawn. Okay, fair enough. And I understand the stakes are high. Right, you're having Jay Wiles as your star witness in a murder case. Someone got murdered. Right, the accused, the defendant, was looking at a severe sentence if the jury believed Jay Wiles. They make all these points brilliantly on the HBO show. Um, people here online told me I was on the show. I saw that they used about a one or two second clip from a video I did. Great. Let me just say to Adnan's legal team, Anytime you want to use any video I make, please feel free. You have my permission in advance. But I want to be clear here. As clear as I can be. While I wouldn't have objected to Adnan being found not guilty because of Jay's lack of reliability, lack of consistency, Right? I do believe that Adnan Syed killed his ex-girlfriend, Heyman Lee. And I do believe that the jury was well within their right to believe in Jay. Right? The jury is the body that judges credibility. Right? I believe there was more than enough here to find that Adnan killed his ex-girlfriend. Hey, first, on the show they point out that none of Adnan's DNA was found in the car. Right? Okay. That's true. But people need to understand that Adnan's palm print was found on the back cover of a map book in the car where the entry for Lincoln Park had been torn out. In other words, the map book places Adnan in the car. Even though the two of them were friends and had dated, the fact that the park where Hayes' body was discovered was torn from the map book provides a connection to the events of January 13th, 1999, when Hay was murdered. So as you hear the DNA evidence, it's misleading. We have a palm print inside the car with the location of the park where she's discovered torn out. I believe that's very damning. Let's also talk about Jay. Now understand, Jay gives different versions. What I want people to do is to Google SerialPodcast.org and timelines with the date of the crime, January 13th, 1999. You're going to pull up different timelines. Adnan's timeline, Adnan's call log, Jay's first interview, Jay's other interview, Jay's trial testimony, right? Now, you're going to see inconsistencies in what Jay had to say. There's no question about it. 
a jury could have found him to be unreliable. But understand that Jay made certain statements to police, statements of fact that the police could actually verify that Jay couldn't have known unless Jay was there with Syed the evening of January 13th, 1999 in the park burying the victim, Heyman Lee. Right? Jay said that while they were there, two phone calls came in on Adnan's phone. Understand, these are teenagers. It's a generation ago. Not everyone had a cell phone. Certainly not young teenagers back then. Cell phones back then were much more expensive than they are now. Adnan had a cell phone. Not Jay. Jennifer Pus Puscateri calls Jay on the number that appears on her caller ID. That number was Adnan's phone because Adnan had lent Jay not just his car but also his phone that day. So she calls back, understand, there are two calls. Jay told police that while he was with Adnan burying the body, two calls came in. Well, we now know from Adnan's call log that one call came in at 7.09 and one call came in at 7.16 p.m. Right? How could Jay have known that if he is not physically there with Adnan, who answers one of the calls? Jennifer Puscateri is on the phone, and they talk. The voice on the other end of the phone is not Jay, it's Adnan. Right? It's a third party. The call logs, which Jay had no control over creating, right? These are incoming calls to Adnan's phone. The call logs confirm Jay's story. Let's talk about something else that's highlighted on the show that needs to be looked at carefully. Now, on the show, they have Asia McLean, who claims that she was in the library with Adnan, right? The afternoon that Hay goes missing, right? It's the time period, quite frankly, that the prosecution is alleging that Hay was murdered. Well, just understand, she's well-spoken. There's no question about it. But there are problems. She wrote a letter dated March 1st, 1999, right, to Adnan. And in the letter, she said that she could help account for, here's the quote, unaccountable lost time, right, 215 to 8 p.m., January 13th. Well, folks, that's too wide a time period. Right? Far too wide a time period. Why would she put 8 p.m. in this March 1st, 1999 letter to Adnan? when she wasn't with Adnan at eight. Adnan doesn't contend that he's with Asia McLean from 2.15 to 8 p.m. Let's just say an attorney who puts Asia McLean on the stand would have to explain this inconsistency because keep in mind, Adnan claims 
that after he got out of psychology class, right, he then goes to Woodlawn Public Library, but then he leaves Woodlawn and ends up at track practice. He's not contending that he was with Asia McLean from 215 to 8. So the question that needs to be asked is why did Asia McLean refer to 8 o'clock in her March 1st, 1999 letter? Well, she writes other letters, right? Um, she has an affidavit dated March 25th, 2000. In that affidavit, she claims that she's in the library and she has a 15 to 20 minute conversation with Adnan and that she leaves the library around 2.40 p.m. Well, let's be clear here. This is a far cry from her March 1st 1999 letter. Far cry. Now we're not talking about 8 p.m. Now we're talking about 2.40 p.m. She has another affidavit. This one's dated January 13th, 2015. Here she says she saw Mr. Syed entered the library at around 2.30 p.m. Right? 2.30. Well, understand, if she then spoke to him 15 to 20 minutes, that would take us to 2.50. Not the 2.40 time. Mentioned in her affidavit dated March 25th, 2000. Understand, the minute you throw out the word affidavit, you're talking about documents that are being submitted under penalty of perjury. So Asia McLean, who is well-spoken, who might have a heartfelt belief that she spoke with Adnan the afternoon of January the 13th, 1999, gave conflicting statements that might have been problematical if she were called as a trial witness. Keep in mind too, a library is a funny place. There are other people in the library. Adnan's lawyer may well have thought that Asia was a little bit inconsistent in her statements, that her recollection didn't jive with Adnan's recollection and may have felt that perhaps other people in the library might have contradicted the statement, which could have led to a huge loss of credibility for Syed at his trial about exactly where he was at the time Heyman Lee was murdered. Let's talk about some other things that need to be considered. Now, the HBO show doesn't say it directly, but they're implying police misconduct. Right? Let's just be clear. They play tapes of J interviews. And, of course, there's a comment that you know that before Jay is questioned on tape, the police had discussed with Jay what happened, right? The idea is the police would only take witness statements that help their case. So the fact that Jay, a teenager who smokes a lot of weed, who's questioned by police weeks after Hay goes missing. The fact that Jay is hazy on dates, the exact sequence of events, right, makes some statements and then later changes them, suggests on the show to the filmmakers 
that Jay may have been coached. Now, the problem with that theme is the coal log, right? Adnan's cell phone. The fact that Jay says they're burying hay and, of course, they receive two calls. And, of course, the call log supports him. But there's a deeper problem, right? Various witnesses that day either see them together or speak by cell phone with them, right? Christina Vinson, Nisha Tanner, Jennifer Puschieri, right? Understand. Adnan lends Jay his car because it's Jay's girlfriend's birthday, or it's around Jay's girlfriend's birthday. And using the car, Jay will be able to buy his girlfriend a birthday gift. Now, that's the stated reason for lending Jay the car, right? That's the stated reason. Well, folks, that's a one-off, right? Whatever Jay's memory is, understand, that only happened on January the 13th, 1999. Adnan is not in the habit of lending Jay his car and his cell phone. We know it was that day because it's the only time that happened. The only time. And of course, the problem is the two guys go and visit Jay's friend Kathy right toward the end of the day before they go and bury Hay's body. And that's completely inconsistent with Adnan's version of events where he goes home right after visiting with Kathy to prepare to go to a mosque, right? Let me also say too, that if you believe the storyline that Adnan wants you to believe, then police officers are making mistakes, right? Understand Adnan's defense is really a OJ defense, in a sense, right? It's that you can't trust the evidence. Some of it is manufactured. So, and this is crucial, the evening of January 13th, 1999, the date that Hay goes missing, police officer Scott Adcock talks with Adnan. And Adnan tells him that he was to get a ride from Hay, but he wasn't able to because he was detained, right? There's no explanation about how he was detained or where he was detained or what have you, right? Now, that's the police officer's version. Understand, Adnan later tells a different law enforcement member, a guy named O'Shea, that Adcock got that wrong because Adnan had a car and wouldn't have needed a lift, right? We know he has a car, only he's lent it to Jay. But why the confusion? Do you believe that Scott Adcock A police officer who doesn't know Adnan, and keep in mind, Adnan is supposed to be a great student, right? Adnan was a football player at school. Adnan was immensely popular. Why would Adcock decide to frame this kid? Also, if someone goes missing at your school, let's just think it through, and you're talking to the police and you have absolutely nothing to do with it. Nothing whatsoever. And you have your own car. 
How could there be ambiguity when you talk with the police? Where the policeman is led to believe that the missing person was supposed to give you a list. Excuse me, a lift. Right? Think it through here. So really, what they're saying here on this show is that Jay is coached. That Jay is also a liar, even though the phone records back him up. And keep in mind, we haven't even gotten into, and I'm not going to get into, the cell tower information. Right? Even if you believe that the cops are corrupt and that Jay was coached on where to say they were, and that also, another argument, the cell tower information pertaining to incoming calls was unreliable. Even if you believe all of that, how does Jay accurately guess that Adnan received two calls? Two calls. When they're burying Hay. Right? How is one of those calls Jennifer Puscateri? Right? The phone matches up. The phone records. How does Pescateri learn where to go pick up Jay later? She claims she picks up Jay at the mall and Jay gets out of Adnan's car. Right? Doesn't that make sense? Given that Jay has no transportation, how does Jay end up back with Jennifer Puscateri that night? How does he get picked up that night? If Adnan is home preparing to go to a mosque. Also, keep in mind too, the night of the murders, excuse me, the murder, Jay Wiles tells his friend Jennifer Puscateri that Hay was strangled. That information had not been released to the public. That wasn't a story. That was public knowledge. Jay knew it because Jay helped bury Hay. So, until it's explained to all of us how a map with Adnan's palm print was found in Hay's car, right? Until that's explained to us, is Adnan claiming that the cops planted it there? Until it's explained to us how Lincoln Park is torn out of that map book. How Scott Adcock got confused talking to Adnan the day he goes missing. And concluding that he heard Adnan tell him that he was to give him a ride. Until we figure out all of that, keep in mind too, that statement meshes with Jay's version of events, right? Because Jay's supposed to have gone to Best Buy to pick up Admin. It's at Best Buy that they pop the trunk and Admin shows Jay her body. Well, let's just track the cars for a minute. How did Admin get to Best Buy? It would be after a ride from Hay, wouldn't it? Right? Adnan, who is seen with red gloves by Jay that day, tells Jay that he strangled her with his own hands. Right? Then you have the map book. Who knows what planning went into the murder? Right, Adnan may have already thought about burying her body 
at Lincoln Park. Right? Understand. They then drive from the Best Buy. Adnan's driving Hayes' car. Jay is following in his car, right? Adnan's car. And then they drop off the car someplace. Right? Some parking lot. Then they come back later and go to Lincoln Park at night where Adnan gets the two phone calls after seven while they're burying Hayes' body where, of course, Hayes' body is found. Let me say this, too. Um, I appreciate the effort from the HBO show. I'm just troubled by the phone calls. I'm troubled by Adnan's alleged statements to Scott Adcock. Right? This is without looking at the problematical parts, the idea of cell phone tower information, right? I'm troubled by Asia McLean's evolving memory, the reference to 8 p.m. in the first letter she writes to Adnan. Parts of this case are troublesome. The idea that Adnan has a timeline that doesn't allow for him to be in Lincoln Park. Right? Well, why is Jennifer Puscateri calling Adnan after 7 that day? Has anyone asked that question? Also, Adnan is not close friends with Jay. He's not. Why is he lending Jay his cell phone and lending Jay his auto? Also, on the show, they talk about Heyman Lee's new boyfriend. I thought that part was gratuitous. Right? Understand, there is just no evidence of the new boyfriend being involved. Right? Understand, the palm print in the car is Adnan's palm print. How do we ignore that evidence and then start focusing on Heyman Lee's new boyfriend? Also, Hay is to pick up a cousin that afternoon. How would the new boyfriend suddenly be able to kill Heyman Lee? Right? Not be seen by anybody. Right? Kill Heyman Lee because we know she doesn't pick up her cousin that afternoon. It's unexplained. Right? On the HBO show, they just talk about how the employment records for the boyfriend who Heyman Lee had at that stage uh, may have been faked. That strikes me as speculation, right? They even go so far as to say that the guy who found the body may somehow be responsible for Hayes' death, right? Here again, you know, they just point out that the guy happens to live close to Woodlawn High School. Folks, that's, that's not enough. Right? The body is not found the next day or the next week. The body is found several weeks later. There's no development of the theory. So I thought what the HBO show was were family members who love Adnan Syed. Syed. Forgive me for the mispronunciation. Right? They love Adnan. They believe they know him. I'm not sure if they do. Let me also say that the lawyer does a spectacular job. I've read some of the court filings. And then hires a lawyer who does a great job. He's on the show. He's talking with people and stuff like that. The prosecution comes up with an offer to him. 
right? The offer was plead guilty and serve four more years. Now understand, this is a young man who was sentenced to life in prison, right? They're saying plead guilty, serve four more years. I'm surprised he didn't take that deal. Right, understand he has decades more to live. Decades more to live. Four years sounds like a lot until you realize that the young man has spent about 20 years in prison already. At the time, he had spent about 18 years in prison. Right, and so I just get the feeling that it's Adnan's self-involvement that's preventing him from accepting deals like that and from having a very honest talk with his family, right? You know, let me add a few more things. Take Asia McLean. She wrote letters to Adnan. It seems to me that if Hay went missing and you're following a schedule, right? Adnan is a guy who would get out of class. He would hang out a little bit. He would then go to track practice, right? That's his pattern. That was the ritual he had. It seems to me that if the police came to you and said, hey, your ex went missing, and that had to be the big story on that high school campus. If they came to him and said, your ex went missing, wouldn't he remember early on, I mean, immediately, that he was in the library? Wouldn't a conversation with Scott Adcock the afternoon of January 13th have Adnan saying to him, hey, I went to the library. These are the people I saw there. These are the people I spoke with. Wouldn't that be front and center? When he hires an attorney, wouldn't he say to that attorney, I mean, after saying, hi, I'm admin, wouldn't he immediately say, here's what I did that day? Right? I was in the library. I saw these people, I spoke with these people. Why is Asia McLean writing a letter to Adnan? Saying, hey, I spoke with you in the library that day. Why isn't Adnan telling his attorney that he spoke with Asia McLean? Well, the cops speak with Adnan later, and I've always maintained that one of the biggest mistakes Adnan makes here is he never calls Hay, who he's very close to, again after she goes missing. Never. Well, when the cops talk with Adnan later, right, in February, Adnan tells them he can't remember what he did January 13th, 1999. That's from his February 26th, 1999 conversation with police. Right? He can't remember. The woman he loves, who he's upset, has moved on to another guy, goes missing. And he's questioned by Adcock that day. He's questioned by police that day. And you mean to tell me that day doesn't stand out to him? Is that believable to you? You know, if I'm a high school student and, wow, a student goes missing and the cops question me, I would remember that day. Not only that, I mean, how is it so hard to tell the police officer, hey, you know what? I was in the library. Check with this librarian. Check with these students. I saw these other students there. 
Now correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section of this YouTube video. That's not what he tells Officer Scott Adcock. He tells Adcock that he was supposed to get a lift from Heyman Lee that day. Right, that must be to cover his tracks in case she mentioned it to anyone. In case anyone saw him getting in her car. Right, can we agree that if he had gotten the lift that day, then he would have been the last person to see Hay from Woodlawn High School. Well, anyway, that's how I see it. I'll agree with Adnan's family that proof beyond a reasonable doubt is a very high standard and that it's very hard to reach with a witness like Jay Wiles, who has given different versions of the underlying events. Right? I'll, I'll agree with that. 100%. Had the jury found Adnan not guilty, I would have accepted that, even though I think Adnan did the crime. And the crime is terrible. It's murder. I would have accepted a not guilty verdict because of Jay's inconsistency. But the jury got a chance to listen to Jay, didn't they? Adnan had an opportunity to take the stand, chose not to. Right? The jury made a decision here. It's a close call. The jury found him guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Right? After all, his palm print is in Hayes' car. After all, his call log on his phone tracks Jay's version of events, at least with regard to the two calls when they're burying Hayes' body. Right? So that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I don't think Adnan has been completely honest with his family. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. I understand that this case is hotly disputed. Thanks for stopping by.